Hello, welcome back to the Russian language video class. At the previous lesson, you learned about, the, about nouns and pronouns, and today we're going to study Russian verbs. A verb is the most important part in the sentence, so once you acquire the Russian verb system and the case system, then the Russian language will really open up to you. And to start our conversation about Russian verbs, let us have a look at a few key sentence structures. Okay? Repeat these sentences after me, reading the translation to yourself. Я говорю по-русски. Я говорю по-русски. Вы говорите по-русски? Вы говорите по-русски? Нет, не говорю. Нет, не говорю. As you might already noticed, the Russian verb changes its ending according to the subject. Okay. This happens a little in English too, although it's not, not as much. For example, I work, you work, but he or she works. Uh, in the Russian language, this is much more elaborate, and you can sometimes even omit the subject, and it will still be clear who or what are you talking about, like in the last sentence. Okay. This occurs according to two major patterns, which are known as the first conjugation and the second conjugation. For your convenience, we shall start with the second conjugation. The, the verbs which change according to the second conjugation usually end with these three letters, it. it. And to form the, person, the personal forms, to produce the, the personal forms, you have to omit the ending and add one of these endings. Well, of course, it is quite difficult to memorize just sets of uh, sound combinations. That is why it is highly recommended that you just pick uh, one or two um, very f frequently used verbs for each of the patterns as an example and memorize their, all their forms. Okay, now let, let us read all these forms of the, of the verb to speak, говорить, говорить, one by one and try to pay special attention to the ending. Я говорю, я говорю, ты говоришь, ты говоришь, вы говорите, вы говорите, он говорит, он говорит, мы говорим, мы говорим, вы говорите, вы говорите, они говорят, они говорят. And you already noticed that there are two forms for this uh, second person singular, the uh, plain one and the polite one. Okay. Uh, there is one more thing you have to remember, that is the first, sp the first person singular is affected by the spelling rules of the consonant mutation, according to which some of the uh, consonant combinations, consonants or consonant combinations, change uh, if they occur before U or U sound. Okay. Of course it is quite difficult to memorize them all at once, but uh, be sure that once you know enough vocabulary, this will all occur just uh, naturally. And now uh, let's have a look at these two examples. The verb любить, to like or to love. In the first person singular, the b sound changes into a consonant, consonant combination, b -b. Okay? according to this pattern, you can see here, любить, я люблю. And the second, the second one, хотеть, to want, я хочу, I want. And now let's have a look at the first conjugation. All the, all the verbs which do not fall under the, the previous group are all attributed to the first conjugation. And these are the verbs uh, like this one, the verb to know, знать. And to form verbs for each of the persons, you have to drop the last two letters, which are normally t and uh, the soft sign, and add one of the following endings. Now let us read them. Я знаю. Я знаю. Ты знаешь. Ты знаешь. Вы знаете. Вы знаете. 
она знает. Она знает. Мы знаем. Мы знаем. Вы знаете. Вы знаете. Они знают. Они знают. Now let's have a look at a few more sentences. You already remember this one, don't you? Do you speak Russian? Вы говорите по-русски? Вы говорите по-русски? And there are two variants to answer it. I speak a little Russian. Да, я немного говорю по-русски. Немного meaning a little, a bit. Да, я немного говорю по-русски. Or, да, я знаю русский язык. Да, я знаю русский язык. And now let's have a closer look at the last sentence. Я знаю русский язык. Or we can say the same about a person. Я знаю Анну. This is the uh, sentence structure, which is one of the elementary sentence structures in many languages. The subject, verb, object structure. Okay. And to form this one in Russian, you need a transitive verb with a noun in the accusative case form like in these two sentences. But unlike uh, the word язык, the word Anna changes the ending into Anno. And this happens according to the rules of forming the accusative case singular. Okay. Let's have a closer look at this one. Okay, uh, for, to form the accusative form of, the, of this uh, nouns, you have to pay attention to the ending and to whether it is animate or inanimate. For the inanimate masculine and neuter, neuter nouns, as well as the fem feminine nouns ending with a soft sign, the form does not change. It is the same as the uh, nominative case form. And as for the rest of the nouns, it is it, the uh, ending changes according to these patterns. For masculine nouns ending with, uh, with a zero ending, you just add an A. For example, student, studenta. And you replace the soft sign with a ya, coin, a horse, kanya. For animate and inanimate female and masculine nouns which end with either a or ya, you replace a with u and ya with u accordingly. Like in these examples, vada, vodu water мужчина мужчину a man земля землю earth дядя дядю uncle well this is it for today now get ready for the next lesson